turn for you straight away to the other side of the studio from business to a look at the world's newspapers. Solange Mujah is here. Hi, Solange. Hi, Nadia. Uh, you're going to be starting us off then in the United States following that Democratic debate uh, last night. And it is the Senator Kamala Harris who's been picking up a lot of headlines. Yeah, the former prosecutor and senator uh, has definitely come away from the debate as a force to be reckoned with. And that became apparent, according to the Washington Post near uh, and nearly all the papers, when she dug into the front runner Joe Biden about his record on race. And as she said, she was the only African American on stage and she criticized the former vice president for his previous comments where he praised his work uh, over the past decades with uh, segregationist senators um, and his opposition as well to school busing, which Harris said uh, helped her become the senator that she is. Now, on Twitter, after the debate, Harris honed in uh, to this, uh, into her point, saying that she was a recipient of school busing uh, in the tense exchange. Now, what is school busing? Uh, it's, it was a program that let poor students from predominantly African-American neighborhoods to be bused to richer neighborhoods where the schools were better. Now, the debate showdown for the Times is a sign that it's high noon for Biden to pass the torch and that the drowning former vice president was, quote, holding onto his lectern like a flotation device, end quote. The paper argues that Biden's strategy of trying to stay above the fray is not working and that his campaign feels like, quote, an exercise in disaster avoidance. And the paper argues that what the one disaster that's finally come is in the form of Kamala Harris. On Twitter, Time Magazine's national correspondent said Harris won the second night of debates after Elizabeth Warren won the first night. Two women politicians, along with the others, for a record six in the race that have managed to set the tone so far of the Democratic debate. Yeah, lots of praise, clearly, then, for yeah. some of the women candidates uh, in this race. But nonetheless, lots of papers pointing out that day to day, many problems for women still existing in the United States. Indeed. And this story is creating a lot of outrage. And it, it's so strange that it sort of had, it's hard to believe. Um, Vox tells us that the police charged an African-American Alabama woman with manslaughter. Now, what happened was she was pregnant mm -hmm. when she got into a fight with someone and that person shot her. Uh, which led her to, to miscarry. Um, and the crime, uh, the, 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 the hitch, though, is that uh, the pregnant victim was the one who was charged by police. Now, the, the case was thrown out of court later, um, but advocates say that the treatment of women, especially black women in the United States, still has a long, long way to go. Now, let's stay uh, with, I suppose, women's news, yes. we're going to call it uh, in a bit of a cliched way, but the health and well-being of another woman is making headlines, this time, though, over in Germany. What's happened? Yeah, this is sort of the women's press review, if you, if you do put it in. I love it. I love it that way. <laughs> uh, the German press is all abuzz about Angela Merkel's uh, health after she was seen trembling for the second time in 10 days. Now, the paper Dewelt argues that the chancellor's health is not a private matter as it would normally be, but a political one. While the paper Der Tigerspiegel says that speculation over Merkel's health could be a sign that she may resign soon, a quote-unquote premature farewell um, uh, and uh, the paper says that this hiding of health issues is actually an old tradition uh, among German politicians. And that from now on, be it at the G20 summit or afterwards, every twitch and tremor of Merkel's will be, will be watched. For the Frankfurter Allgemeiner, this is a pure case of, quote, vultures coming out to circle the chancellor. Nevertheless, the paper argues that the tremors could be a reflection of how physically exhausting uh, her job is and how physically exhausting it has been for the past. 14 years. All right, Solange, let's uh, shift gear then and focus on something coming up this weekend. Gay Pride weekends will be held across the world, and there'll be a particular focus on New York, won't there, because it's 50 years since the Stonewall uh, uprising there. Yeah, and, and the New York Times takes a look back on the police raid and the ensuing protests it created. It talks about how the first Gay Pride marches were not about rainbow-hued floats, but that they were, quote, a radical assault on mainstream values at the time, that they were, uh, they were an act of, quote, desperate courage Courage, one that's been rewarded by a global movement for LGBTQ rights and parades across the world. Now, in Paris, there will be a parade as well. Huffington Post, the French version of Huffington Post, uh, says that Gay Pride Parade will still go on despite the crazy heat wave temperatures that we're all suffering from. Okay, so here in France this weekend, we may have a lot of heat, an LGBT march, and also perhaps some celebrations because maybe uh, France is going to do very well in the Women's World Cup. Maybe being the key word here. <laughs> For tonight, France does uh, go up against 
uh, the American uh, women's football team. And the French press is getting a bit giddy about the match against the world champions. The Parisien says on its cover, uh, tonight's the night, while L'Equipe... Uh, uh, hopes that there will be, quote, a conquest of the West uh, as France tries to beat the, beat the almer almighty American team. Yeah, and dare I say it, I think I'm supporting the United States. I want both to win. <laughs> I don't know whether that's going to happen, that's for sure. No. Solange, thank you very much indeed. Solange Mojanda uh, with our press review.